Hey guys, welcome to my tour of Yumacon 2014. Before I get started, I just wanted to say that the location for this con is absolutely huge. So I was not able to show absolutely everything there is to see at this location. But I show all the essential things and everything that's truly important to the con. But just know that there's so much more out there for you to find. So please come to this con in the future and just go and explore when you first get there. Because there's a lot that you'll find that I didn't show. But without further ado, let's get started. We start the tour on the 5th floor of the Marriott in the Renaissance Center. Most all of the Renaissance Center is set up in a way to where you walk on the paths in a circle and to one side you'll have rooms and the other side is normally elevators. Here on the 5th floor all the little hallways that you see branching off from the main pathway lead to different panel rooms for the convention. As you can see, there are many smaller panel rooms on the 5th floor, but if we take one of the escalators down to the 4th floor and go to the one large room on this floor, we'll find ourselves in the main event room. For the most part, this is the only notable thing on the 4th floor. So we'll leave this floor by finding an escalator and heading down to the third floor. Once we get to the third floor, there's a few paths we can take. The first one that we took in this video takes us to a room that played AMVs all weekend as well as the arcade type video game room. If we leave this area and go back to where the escalators that we came from the fourth floor were and go past them, we'll find the main circle area for this third floor. Once in this circle area, if we go to the right, and then take another right at the first hallway that we come to, we'll make our way down to the area that holds the video game room and the tabletop gaming room. If we leave the tabletop game room and then head back to the main circle of the third floor and continue right along the circle, we'll eventually come to a hallway that leads to the check-in area of the Marriott. This is everything noteworthy on the third floor. Do note that in the center of all the floors that we've explored so far, there have been elevators. If we continue further right along the circle on the third floor, we'll eventually come to an area that will lead to escalators that will bring us down to the second floor. Once we get off the escalator, if we immediately walk forward and go to the glass ledge, we'll be able to look down at part of the lowest level of the Renaissance Center. The area you're looking at is one of the main entrances to the building, and if you ever visit Yumacon, I highly suggest going to this area and going out the doors because there's a beautiful waterfront view that you might want to take advantage of with cosplay photos. If we turn directly around from here and go past the escalators that we just came down, we'll find ourselves on Yumacon's very famous glass walkway. From this walkway, if you look down to the next level, you'll see an area that I didn't actually go into because I didn't have time, but it has 
different things like a Starbucks and some other things there, as well as the elevators that I would highly recommend using if you stay at the Renaissance Center during your time at the con. If we continue all the way around the glass walkway, we'll eventually come to an open area that has a set of escalators. Take them down, and then immediately take the next set of escalators down on the next level that you get to, and you'll find yourself on the lowest level of the Rensen. Right behind you is the food court. If we leave the food court and go back up two floors to the floor where the glass walkway was, we'll find two things. The first thing we'll find is the CVS that's built into the Rinsen. Yes, this is a full functional CVS, so if you've forgotten anything at home, you might be able to buy it here. If you continue past the CVS, at the end of this hallway you'll find a small set of doors that lead to the people mover. The people mover we use to take over to the Kobo, which has the second half of the convention. I did not record on the people mover, as it would have taken too much footage, but it normally takes about 5 minutes to get from the rinse into the Kobo on the people mover. Okay, so we just got off the people mover, and now we're in the Kobo where the second half of Yumacon is held. To get to the parts of the Kobo where Yumacon is taking place, go directly to the first escalator you see and go down two floors. Once you get down two levels, start making your way to the complete other end of the Kobo, as this is where pretty much everything that has to do with Yumacon is going on. Once we start to get pretty close to the other end of the Kobo, start looking on your far right wall because eventually you'll find a couple of open doors. These open doors lead to where registration was held. If we go back out these doors and continue further down, eventually on your left, you're going to find an open area. This open area is the second food court of Yumacon. If we leave this food court the same way we came in, you'll see a row of escalators. Take those escalators down, and you'll come to the lowest level of the Kobo. This area is used a lot for cosplay photos and things like that, but if you continue onward, eventually on your left you'll find a hallway that leads to a bunch more panel rooms. If we leave this hallway and continue going down the same way that we were going, we'll eventually find a set of escalators, take them up to the second floor, and where you come out will be the entrance area of another one of the larger panel rooms.
If we turn around from here, we'll see a little bit far off a pathway that hangs over the first floor where you can look down and see everything that's going on there. If we make our way across it and then go to the right, eventually on our left, we'll find the entrance to the dealer's room. And that's pretty much everything for Yumicon 2014, or at least the immediate important stuff. Like I said, there's a lot of other stuff that I wasn't able to show in this video because, well, it would have just taken way too long. This video already ran longer than most of my tours do. But still, you should really go next year and check it out and try and find all the things that I didn't show. Also, if you're there next year, don't forget that all of this is subject to change. Cons will always change and evolve their con as the years go on. So if you're there and things aren't in the exact layout as what I said in this tour, well, I mean, it makes sense. It happens. This is just a nice guide to get you ready if you've never been before. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, you can click on the video on the screen to jump over to my vlog channel, where I vlog my day-to-day -day life for your entertainment. If that's not enough for you, go to the description below to find links to my Twitch, where I stream video games almost daily. My Facebook, Instagram, email, Twitter, Tumblr, and the Convention Reviews website.